Welcome back. Most of us have probably experienced the benefits of listening to a good song, right? Yes. But how exactly does music impact our bodies and brains? Oh, yeah. So listen, our next guest set out to answer that very question in her new book, Wired for Music, a search for health and joy through the science of sound. We are thrilled to welcome health journalist Adriana Barton to the show. Welcome. <laughs> So you are a health journalist and you were also a cellist for 17 years. So that makes you just the perfect person to, to write this book. So let's start with that uh, connection. What, what is the connection between music and stress and anxiety? What have you found? Well, most of us have music that makes us feel better. We know this intuitively, but I didn't realize that it actually study, it, it stimulates dopamine in the brain. And music has also been studied head to head with Valium in surgical environments to help with preoperative anxiety, not just in one study, but dozens of them. So music and mood has been rigorously studied. Wow. This is fascinating. I feel like people might think that there's only particular types of music that would stimulate this kinds of response. So is there, if we're feeling stressed or anxious, is there a kind of genre that we should be looking for? Well, this is good news, because you want to choose the music you love most. Wow. And nice. the reason is that's the music that's going to stimulate the pleasure and reward circuitry in the brain. Second of all, if you need to chill out and calm down, you want to choose music at about the pace of a resting heartbeat. So that would be 60 to 80 beats per minute. That's going to reduce your heart rate and uh, also lower your cortisol levels, which are the stress hormones. Mm -hmm. I, I find this fascinating. You had mentioned that it's been music has been studied head to head with Valium. Uh, this is for, for mental health, reducing anxiety, but you've also looked at music for pain relief. Yes. What have you found there? Well, there was a study at Queen's University that used Go MRI. <laughs> <laughs> And they refer to music as the oldest known method for relieving pain, the oldest. And what they found was that when music is stimulating that pleasure reward circuitry, again, you wanna choose the music you love, it has an effect on the body's descending analgesic system, which is our natural painkiller in the body. Wow, wow. And a lot of parents uh, rush to get their kids into music, you know, and that can sometimes be a bit of a battle in terms of practicing and all that, but you want them to have those skills. What, what have you found for adults who want to jump into that game? Is there some good news there? Well, interestingly, it's on a lot of people's bucket lists, learn to play a musical instrument before I die. <laughs> and in fact, there's a, a Florida study, they took retirees between the ages of 65 and 80, and they enrolled them in piano lessons. And after six months, those adults did better on memory tests and executive functioning skills compared to those on a wait list for the piano lessons. So huh. that's one study, it's early days, a lot more research needs to be done, but there's some suggestion that music might benefit in terms of preserving cognition as we age. I love that. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, you know, you are you wanna set the record straight, as you do in your book, between the myths and the realities uh, of yeah. music. So we're gonna play a game called <laughs> Pseudo or Science with you right now now. Uh, we're going to say a statement and you're going to tell us, all of us, we're going to take a guess. We're going to guess if the statement is pseudo or if it's science and then you'll give us the answer at the end. Audience, are you ready as well? Yeah. Oh, so we've got our okay. paddles ready. So the first question we're going to decide, is it pseudo or is it science? Music makes you smarter. I feel like, yeah. Pseudo. It's oh, pseudo. pseudo. Music does not make you smarter. Oh. If, if only that were true. Really? Yes. Yeah, what? Okay. There's no evidence. All right. It Let's might preserve kind of cognition, but it's not going to get your... Improve your IQ. IQ. No. Okay, All got right. it. Huh. Moving on. <laughs> How about this one? Chewing gum. Oh, helps get rid of songs that are stuck in your head, known as earworms. Well, I hope it's not true because I have earworms at night. In the no, middle I'm going to say, I'm gonna say science. Pseudo. I, I hope so. You're right. It's science. <gasps> yes. What? University of Reading in the UK found that jaw movements help to short circuit involuntary auditory loops, which are earworms. Fascinating. Okay, next up, uh, some people have what's known as a music gene. Is that pseudo Ooh, or science? Uh, oh boy, science. I don't know. Eh, pseudo. 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 No. I have gotten everything wrong. <laughs> no such thing as a music gene. In fact, 
Almost all of us are innately wired for music, hence the name of my book. Uh, even at, at birth, newborns can detect their brains will respond to the, the strong beat in music in a way that macaque monkeys' brains do not. Fascinating. <gasps> How do you explain people who have no rhythm? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> all wired for music. Like, a lot of that is one and three. Like, <laughs> Cultural. Okay. Cultural. And, yeah, no, cultural. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna read verbatim what the producer wrote on my card. This one hits home for Lainey and me because <laughs> everyone on our staff tells us we're tone deaf. <laughs> the question is 20% of the population is tone deaf. Pseudo or science? I'm gonna say science on that. Uh, Pseudo. Oh! Only 2% oh. of people cannot distinguish between the, the notes beside each other on a piano. Oh. Most of us have these abilities. We've just not had a chance to develop them. And in fact, there are, are choirs called tone deaf choirs and can't sing choirs that help people develop the, the vocal control and the confidence in the ear to learn to sing oh. with others. Well, there and enjoy There's hope. There's there hope. is hope. <laughs> a lot. Mozart is good uh, for child development. Is that like when you're in, pregnant, you play Mozart to your yeah, baby? So. Is that the, it, that's I the mean, question? I, okay. I'm in the womb. Call. Mozart's I'm gonna go the, the opposite because I've gotten pseudo. everything wrong. So I'm just going to flip it. Pseudo. Yes! So this idea of the Mozart effect dates from a 1993, 1993 experiment that has been thoroughly, thoroughly debunked since then. It, it's not going to boost IQ listening to Mozart or playing it. You're not going to create a little baby Einstein? Sadly okay. not. <laughs> Adriana, I, this is just the start and it's a great way to, I think, get people to read your book because this was so cool. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for all this thank great you so much. <laughs> You can find it everywhere now. Now for our lucky members of the studio audience, you're getting your signed copy today! Yeah. Oh. I guarantee you, you will be smarter after reading. <laughs> I'll talk to you back right after this. Hey there, wasn't that great? Do you know where you can find some equally good content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with discussions, debates, and some laughs. Head there now, like and subscribe.